Good day, everyone, once again. It's good to have us here once again. I hope you are having a great time. It's, it's fantastic seeing some consistent faces and people come early. I'm excited to have everyone here today and it's going to be a great day as usual. So today we are going to do our best to cover some few grants. Um, I've been expecting some new topics from all of you so that um, we could take a, a little break from uh, organic chemistry. I just I just don't want it to be very dry and boring to you guys. But nevertheless, we will um, do our best to make sure the concepts are easy to understand and there are no issues. So without wasting much of your time, I know um, a lot of people will still join us. So while we wait for others to join, um, I'll just do a very quick review of uh, what we have been doing so far and before we go over to the business of today. Okay, in the past um, few days, we, uh, we started a lesson. I'll just run down. So in the next five minutes, we'll start to this concept. Now, I'll just run down what we'll be doing so far under organic chemistry, and uh, hopefully, um, you will catch up. So, for those of us who are just joining, they will be able to catch up, and definitely they will, um, they will get to understand what we're talking about. All right, so we started last week by looking at organic chemistry part two. So I think that was on, was it this week? That should be on what? And then, um, yeah, that was last Saturday, this time last Saturday. Then we talked about isomerism. So we're able to discuss homologous series as organic compounds exhibit homologous property. They behave as a family. And so be, behave as a family, they exhibit similar chemical properties, exhibit similar method of preparation, um, they, they show quite differences in physical properties. We call it there is degradation in physical properties as the number of carbon atoms increases. Okay, so we also say carbon is able to form all these variety of compounds because um, it has been, it's been because of um, its four valence electron it has. So it's only carbon that um, can bond with carbon. We sing, to form single bond, triple bond, and double bond. And also carbon can form with itself in a cyclic way, and also in a straight chain, and also in a branch chain. So there is this property of carbon, we talk about catenation. So catenation being the ability of carbon to form covalent bonds with itself, whether long, branch, or closed. So we talk about functional groups, that these functional groups determine the chemical properties of these organic compounds, okay? So that is basically where we, some of the things that we reviewed. We said there are a lot of functional groups, carbon to carbon, double bond, present in alkenes, carbon to carbon, triple bond in alkynes. You know, OH is a functional group present in alcohols, just an O present in ether, then CHO, so present in R canals, they have ketones, they have carboxylic acids, esters, amides, amines, of course, arcanes. Okay, then we do look at ways of identifying the functional group in a given compound, you know, excluding the carbon atoms. You can see we have the like in arcanes, arcanes, arcanes. So we did this. We talked about isomerism, compounds exhibiting the same molecular formula, but different structural formula. We talk about different types of isomerism. Uh, we have structural, we have positional. A lot of time, why, why focus focuses attention on structural, basically structural, because 
you have a lot of structural formulas. We talked about structural isomers of butane. And I also told you that for hydrocarbons, for hydrocarbons, compounds exhibit structural isomers from the fourth carbon atom. From the fourth carbon atom. So there, there are no isomers in methane. There's no isomers in methane, in ethene. There's no isomers in ethyne. There's no isomers in propene or propyne. But merely you get the boots, you begin to see isomers. Like you say, butane has um, two isomers. Butene has three isomers. But one in, but two in, and um, two methyl but two methyl propene. Okay, so we talk about um, um, benzene having as much as three isomers. We talked about decaying having as much as seventy-five isomers. So this will describe isomerism in arkenes. So like I said earlier, butene has three isomers. So we also able to look at this chloropentane. Chloropentane having as much as eight isomers, big time. All right, so it's very, very important that you, I hope you have the notes for those of us who are on the WhatsApp platform. So like I said, you join the WhatsApp platform so that you can always um, see the notes. And recently, a student requested for the video for um, naming, and that's, that was why I posted the video on naming. Okay, so if you make any requests, you can make requests of past videos like electrolysis. We did work on electrolysis, Faraday's law of electrolysis, calculation of other electrolysis. Um, we did the beginning of organic chemistry naming. Uh, which other one did we talk about? We talked about arcanes, isomerism. We have, I still have videos of those. So if you feel you need to revise again, you need my help. It's simple. You send me a message on WhatsApp and definitely I will send the video to the group. So we also talked about um, struct, um, another type of isomerism that, so is there for, for me to know how many isomers a compound has or do you have to write it out? Well, there is no formula to know how many isomers a compound has. You just have to write it out. But for YEC, YEC is, don't expect you to learn more than pentane. Pentane. You know, pentane has three isomers. And pentane has, um, but, butane has two isomers. So YEC expects us only to learn maximum from pentane. So that's what this about says. Okay, so you don't have to snuff yourself. Okay, stuff like that of yourself because of isomerism. Okay, so here we have optical isomerism. We talked about chiral carbon, carbon having four different groups. We also talked about geometric isomerism that have cis and trans isomer. This geometric isomerism, as we said, only is only present in arcane, in arkenes and arkynes, double bond and triple bond. So it's not present in single bond compound. I will also say that before it to exhibit isomerism, it has to have only two unique groups. So like this hydrogen has to be the same and this R has to be the same. Okay, you cannot have three hydrogens, that compound cannot exhibit isomerism. Okay, so it's very cool. All right, so we talked about how to name them, how to put cis and put trans before you name the compound. Okay, so no big deal. So we Took a, took a big dive in studying arcanes. That's the simplest homologous family. Then we also talk about um, the uniqueness of arcanes. You can see here, boiling point increases as the number of carbon atoms increases. And that is as a result of increasing molecular mass and also increasing Van der Waal force. So Van der Waal force present in these arcanes make them have higher boiling points. Okay. All right, so that is also very, very key for us to take note of. Then, so we, move, we also moved ahead, talked about labeling repression of methane from um, sodium methanoate. All right, so we're able to say here, it states that um, methane on heating with sodium, so, soda lime, 
and heat it with soda lime, produces methane and sodium carbonate. Okay, methane is collected over water with low or uh, very slow solubility in water, little solubility in water, so that makes it, um, that's why it's collected over water in that case. All right, so we have to use soda lime technically because it is not the liquid scent and it does not attack glass. So then you also talk about the various properties of methane undergoing combustion reaction and also undergoing um, substitution reaction with chlorine. This substitution reaction is only possible in the presence of ultraviolet radiation. Okay, so we said this mechanism, because Wyke is requesting for the mechanism, so we say it has the beginning, we call it the initiation, as the progressive, we call it the propagation, and the third part is termination. So that is where the, the termination is where the product is formed, okay? It's so talked about the uniqueness of the product formed. We have chloromethane, bromo, dichloromethane, trichloromethane, and tetrachloromethane. So you can see all the hydrogen in the methane has been substituted, has been replaced by chlorine. So that is substitution reaction. So we said that even though alkanes on a good substitution reaction, they are generally inert. Okay. So we talked about the uses of alkanes. Then we went over to talk about alkenes, which is the next homologous family. Then we talked about the structure, learning how to draw it, and also learning how to name them. We talked about the laboratory preparation. And I pointed out clearly that all these alkanes, industrially, they are prepared industrially from um, cracking of hydrocarbons. So cracking of heavy oils, we call it heavy oils, or higher molecular mass hydrocarbon. Okay, so that's one method of, or from natural gas. So they are obtained from natural gas or from cracking of crude oil. All right, so we talked about um, this already preparation. I told you the precautions, the reason why we have to put the empty flask to ensure that the sodium hydroxide does not suck into the reaction container. And why the sodium hydroxide present in the second flask is used as a, a, sub, a compound that will help us to remove the impurities. So it, 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 impur, it removes the impurities present in the gas mixture. Okay, so the impurities are carbon force that are phosphine. So we summarize the reactions of our kings under using this schematic representation. So our kings can undergo mainly addition. So apart from the fact that all hydrocarbons undergo combustion reactions, the alkenes having a double bond undergo a higher form of reactivity, and that is addition reaction. Very, very, very important for you to understand that. Okay, so talk about addition reaction, oxidation reaction using potassium permanganate. We also talked about um, um, hydration where you treat a thing with steam in the presence of phosphoric acid catalyst at 300 degrees Celsius and 60 atmospheric pressure, that will give you ethanol. That is a hydration reaction. This is one of the industrial methods of preparing ethanol. And finally, you said our kings, specifically ethene, undergoes polymerization to form a very useful material we use in making plastics. And we say ethene is a raw material for plastics. So polythene is one major use. Other hydrocarbons, other alkenes are propene. Propene also undergoes polymerization to form polypropene. Take note of that is why question. Polypropene and ethene are two mon uh, polymers produced from ethene and propene. Okay, so don't forget that. So today, yeah, that's, that was a summary, and these are the various reactions. Um, so we, today, we will dive into the next hydrocarbon and finish up on our hydrocarbon, which is alkynes. Our kinds take notes are another homologous So that is where we'll be starting our lesson today. And I hope you are ready for it. My intentions were to deal with our kinds and also see if I can definitely, if I finish our kinds, I should be able to do, um, what do you call it, um, benzene or I will do 
alcohol. So that's actually my intention. So um, for those of us in SS2, you don't have to be afraid. It's chemistry. Chemistry is fine. So no issue. So whether you learn it now or you learn it later from your school teacher, it's still it's advantageous to you. Okay, so it's not difficult. All right, so I'm trying to get my cursor. So where is this cursor is running with me? Okay. Okay, so I think I got what I want. So our kinds in the laboratory are the next set of hydrocarbons. You know, we talked about hydrocarbons um, having carbon to hydrogen bond. So the next family is our kinds. So you can see here the have the general molecular formula CNH2N minus two. And we also see that they are unsaturated. They are unsaturated. So unsaturated means that they are able, they have carbon to carbon triple bond. So that means they are more real. In fact, they are actually more reactive than the archives that we talked about. So we talk about archives. Okay, so these are kinds are prepared. Now, one thing I want you to remember, the way we name our kings is the same name way we name our kinds. And the first member for this archive series is um, ethane, because there must be two carbon. There must be two carbon for us to have an archive, because there must be a triple bond. That is what makes it an archive. There must be a triple bond. So if there are that's triple bond between two carbon, not carbon and hydrogen, not carbon and oxygen, not carbon and nitrogen, but between carbon and carbon. Okay, so that is um, where we are today. Hopefully, we will. Uh, and finally, I talked about hybridization. Hybridization for our case, we said that here we have, we can see our case having an SP hybridization. Okay, means that the carbon to carbon triple bond was formed between one of the S orbitals and one of the P orbital. Now, I'm tempted to draw this hybridization so that you remember it's a temptation, but I just have to show us once again. So, so take note of um, what I have here. So, we said carbon has four bonds. So one, yeah, two, three. So we have, let me say, it has one here. So we have, um, let me redraw this so I will not waste our time. So in the, so we have, okay, let me draw that carbon. Okay, so let me select, let me adjust it so you can see what we're talking about here. So in basically, um, when you have to do the bonding, so this carbon brings its own one electron, two electron, and three electron. So this other carbon brings its own one electron, two electron, and three uh, so they used the three bonds there to share so this other one it now used this one to bond with hydrogen okay so that is so in that case it is going is bonding the, you have sp between carbon to hydrogen but for that is how these bonds were formed so we are not yet to do hybridization in the nearest in, in a week's time, we can talk about hybridization if we have the time. So, but let's just cool off with the fact that our kinds have the SP hybridization. So, in the lab, the time is the most important once again, just like we talked about uh, 18. So, the time also is the most important in this our kind family. Okay, so remember their homologous series. So, the, the 10, they definitely will. Um, react the same way. So 
how do you prepare it in the lab? In the lab, we have this. Yeah, let me draw, let me use the diagram to explain. So basically, I hope you can see clearly. If you have any question, please don't hesitate to put your question on the chat section. I will definitely respond it right as the question comes. So here, you see definitely here that we have the calcium carbide. We have what we call the calcium carbide, CAC. So the calcium carbide is placed at the bottom of the flask. And this flask is usually kept on a pot. We keep this flask on a pot and we put sand at the base of this pot. We usually put sand at the base of this pot because this ration is highly exothermic. This ration is high, so we deep, make sand and put it here. So we put the flask inside the pot of sand. Not okay. Now the reason why we have to put sand inside this, put the flask in the pot of sand, is to prevent the flask from cracking. So the heat, the large amount of heat generated by this reaction can crack the flask. So what happens? The heat is transferred to the sand, which is fair. So you add cold water from here. So cold water enters there. So just it's cold water on calcium carbide. Imagine cold water carry, bringing out so much heat. That could tell you the amount of heat that is, that is carried out in this reaction. All right. So when this during this process, the gas is evolved and the gas passes through this delivery tube into this flask. Now, this is a copper sulfate solution, CuSO4. Now, this copper sulfate solution is used to remove impurities. Impurities again, phosphine impurities. So, we also have phosphine impurities, we ask from the carbide here. Okay, so any, any of such gas produced from here is removed by this copper surface solution. And the gas, the time is not soluble in copper surface, so the gas is collected over water. Okay, so that is one technical way of doing this kind of reaction in the lab. So it's a basic preparation, so you can talk about it. Okay, so um, a time, the chemical formula for a time is C2H2. The uniqueness of this gas is, is that it has a sweet smell, very unique sweet smell when it is pure. Sparingly soluble in water is less dense than air. So the, funny enough, this gas cannot be compressed. So I've seen that question in, in UTME before asking, why is it that ethane cannot be stored in tanks or why can it not be compressed? Why is it difficult to be compressed? Because it is unstable and will explode on Compress compression. Okay, so very important. Chemically, because it's a double, it, it contains a triple bond, it is more reactive. It is more reactive, and uh, that means it will react more than an akin and more than an akin. So we say it is highly saturated. Highly saturated, okay? So naturally, all hydrocarbons will bond to give carbon dioxide and water. That is if we have excess what? oxygen but in limited oxygen to give us coke carbon two oxide and water all right so hope you can see my screen properly so just like an akin akines will undergo addition reaction so that's because they are unsaturated so they also undergo addition reaction so we're looking at ways to differentiate between an akine and an akin for an akin, we will have we just use one mole of hydrogen gas. But for an akin, we we'll need two moles. Take note of that. So you need you require more hydrogen to produce an uh, to react with an akin so that you can produce an akin. So if it was an ordinary akin, um, let me show you. For ordinary akin, this is where the reaction will take place. So this this is the reaction for a team. But before we can get to 18, we need one more molecule of hydrogen to react with this triple bonded compound. Remember what I told you the last time that the reactions are mainly at the double bond position. The reactions are mainly at the double bond position. So the hydrogens we add to this carbon and to this other carbon, okay? 
So that is the reaction sentence, all right? So that's, so first our kinds are converted to our kins, then for subsequent addition reaction, we make them to be converted to our kins. So don't forget, I've seen several of these questions in why, okay? Don't forget that this reaction is possible in the presence of nickel catalyst. All right, so that's very key. Then the next reaction we look at hydrogenation. How we've talked about hydrogenation. Here we talk about halogenation. Under halogenation, we are talking about addition of a halogen. So here our halogen of interest is chlorine. You can use bromine, you can use iodine, you can use fluorine. All right, so it still give you similar products because they are homologous family. So if you add chlorine, chlorine adds adds the reaction center. So you can see that's a double bond. So we we only need we need two moles of chlorine to be to make this compound saturated. So additional reactions will convert the alkyne to an alkene, then subsequently to an alkene. So that saturation will have been attained in the presence of excess chlorine. So you can see I've added one more chlorine because Cl2 does not saturate it. So that is very, very key. All right, so take note of the product for in, in the exam, you can be asked to name it. So you can see chlorine on the first carbon, two chlorine on the first carbon. That's why I have it as one, one. Two chlorine on this. So if you can call this one, one, you call this carbon two. So you have two chlorine, chlorine here, and chlorine here. So that's why I have it one, one. I also have chlorine on the second carbon up and down. So you have two, two. All right, so that's why it's one, one, two, two, tetra. Tetra means there are four chloro ethane, right? If you have any question, don't waste time. Just put it on the chat section and I will definitely attend to you. If you want me to re-explain, also do the same to put it on the chat section and I will explain. Hydro halogenation. Remember, um, so a few days on Wednesday, we talked about Markovnikov's rule. Here, same thing is applicable again. So let me say, um, I don't understand what do you not understand? I'm only telling you here that um, let's say, for example, you have look at this at a time, look at this a time here. We assume that the triple bond makes them more reactive, like makes them more hungry. Imagine you take um what do you multivite, you, you take a multivite, you take a multivite in the morning as breakfast after you have taken breakfast, then you not take food. So on a daily basis, you take multiply. What, the, what would that multiply mean? That means that your body will work more. So you need more food. So these guys, the, each carbon here is assumed that, let's assume the triple bond is a multiply. So this triple bond is making this carbon, this carbon that are sharing the triple bond to be more reactive. So to break, you need to break this triple bond by feeding, that's what we call the addition, by carrying out an addition reaction to these two carbon. Now, the question is, how many bonds, take note, how many bonds are used here? How many bonds are used to form this carbon to carbon bond? Okay, one moment. So we, we need to, that's what I did at the beginning. So remember carbon is four. So two and four. So carbon has used, so it needs four more to fill this outermost shell. So that means it needs to undergo bonding. But fortunately for carbon, they now found another carbon to bond with. And it now use three of, this carbon use, um, let me undo this, I use something easier. This carbon used three of his own electrons. Why the other carbon, when he was coming, also brought three of his own electrons. So let me differentiate with the red box. So this one, three of his own electrons. And so when both of them combined, so when this one combined with this, we form a bond. This one combined with this, we form a bond. This one combined with this, we form a bond. So that's why we form triple bond. Now one, so that means this, uh, 
you when the form is retrieved, but it now belongs to a family that we call our kinds. These are organic compounds that, for, that usually have triple bonds. Now, what is the implication? The implication is that this, comp, this carbon is not saturated. On a good day, all carbon is supposed to have single bonds to be saturated. So, so they are not, you cannot be single bond between the carbon so to be saturated. So when it's saturated, it's like it's stable. So for, but for this carbon, that is sharing this triple bond is not stable. So if it's going to combine with somebody like hydrogen, now this is H2. So that means it, each of these hydrogen will have to split. Remember we talked about homolytic fission. This hydrogen splits. So this hydrogen is coming with its own electron. Let me, let me make a small dot. This hydrogen is also coming with its own electron. So what do they need to do? So they need, so remember this carbon bonded with this uh, carbon. So each of them brought their own unique, um, each of them brought their own unique electron. So to break this bond, to break this bond that is linking these two carbon together, it is to bond this with this carbon. So this hydrogen combines with this one, and this other hydrogen combines with this. So at the end of the day, we don't have this bond again, these two stuff. So yeah, we have broken it because they've combined with hydrogen. So instead of using the bond to combine with each other, they now use the bond to combine with hydrogen. And that's called the addition of hydrogen. To further break this other bond to that means we will need more hydrogen. So we, that's why we now bring another hydrogen, hydrogen gas, that's H2. You cannot use only one. So when this one combines with this, it brings the electron and combines. This one also combines with this. So that means the second bond will be broken. So let me break this second bond. Um, let me do it properly. So I've broken the second bond. So I'm now left with only one bond between these two carbon. So that's why I say here that when you are carrying out an addition reaction, carrying out an addition reaction will lead to breaking of the triple bond. I hope it is clear to you now. If you still have questions, ask. I don't have issue with explaining. So that addition reactions usually lead to breaking of the triple bond. So the question, oh, I'm not doing anything, any strange thing. Oh, so look at here now. I want to add um, hydrogen bromide. That is hydrogen and a halogen. So we now call it hydro from hydrogen, halogenation from halogen. So combining hydrogen and halogen, we call it hydrohalogen. If it is in inorganic chem chemistry, we call it hydrogen halide. Hydrogen, halide, halide for halogen, so no big deal. So if I want to break it, remember all halogens like chlorine all need one electron to be filled. So hydrogen needs one electron. So we we'll split this compound into two. Hydrogen has one electron in the atom shell. Let me put it. And bromine, bromine also has one electron to be filled. So hydrogen goes and shares with this carbon, while bromine goes and shares with this carbon. And when it does that, one of the bond is broken. So let me break this bond. Let me use a white something to break the bond. So yeah, that kind of addition reaction breaks the bond. You can see. So we now have that is what we have here. That you can see, uh, ladies and gentlemen, that is what we have here. One of the bond has been broken. But this addition does not completely break the bond. So we need more hydrogen halide to break this. So this one is still unsaturated. So this hydrogen also breaks. I am not saying here that for this one that is already containing, at least this carbon now have two hydrogen. You can see here, this carbon have two hydrogen. Why this other carbon has only one hydrogen? So the question is, where would you prefer to add this hydrogen to this carbon or the second carbon? According to my Russian elder brother, Markov Nikos, <laughs> he proposed that 
in his experiment, the hydrogen we prefer to be added to this other carbon that has two more hydrogens, while the bromine will produce one, we add to the carbon that has less hydrogen. So that is, you look at what I said, this gives first monobromine and one one, then one one, you have two possibilities. One one dibromo means that they have two bromine on this on the first carbon, or one two dibromo, which is still a possibility. But he called this a minor and a major product. If the bromine goes and adds to the wrong place, it will have to be the minor product. We call it lower yield. But if it adds to the right place, it will give you a higher yield. I told you when we talk about yield, yield has to do with the percentage produced. Every product producer wants to do small work and produce much. So the first one, this one that is called minor, is giving the producer stress. Why the second one is giving. So that's why we have this product. So it's called one, one, dibromo, ethane. Okay, so the double bond has completely been broken. I hope I've convinced you. All right, ladies and gentlemen, so the same thing is hydration. Hydration, that means water will split. Remember how water usually ionizes when we are doing the electrolysis? Hydration, water will split. One will give us H plus, then I'll give you H. So it's, it's to split. Oh, this one comes here. This one comes here, you see? So that is what we have here. You can see here. You see, there's a double bond here. We call this one ethanol. You can see et ethanol because it's not ethanol because there's a double bond. But if you now add the second water molecule, so this ethanol can also be rewritten. This is, this is an isomer also. So it's not as if the product. This one can also be written in this form. So this is another possible product. So that it gives us ethanol or it gives us ethanol. So it's not that we added more water. If I have added more water, you see two hydroxide. Okay, so there are, these are two possible products. And both of them are isomers. So we can see we're talking about isomers. So um, what we are going to do is I'm going to um, give us opportunity to um, log out because of our time. Remember, this is a one hour class. We'll log out and we'll log in again um, so that we can conclude the reaction. We are technically done with um, our kings. So we compare between our kings, our kings, and our kinds. After we have done that, then we will play a little with um, aromatic hydrocarbon. I hope this. Don't forget to log in. Don't just give it. That's not the end of the lesson. Just log out and log in again. All right. I'll see you in a minute. 